it's Nicole. Um, don't mind my hair. It's like a little crazy. Um, I still have to wash it and condition it and everything like that. But I was just watching a movie called Conversations with God. And it really reminded me of um, the time that I was, I felt like I was homeless. Not like felt, but I was homeless. I didn't have an address. Um, my physical address and mailing address were not the same before. Um, this makes me look huge. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was just to the point where I felt as if, um, no one heard me. No one really cared. No one opened their doors probably cause no one really knew. I didn't want anyone to know that I was, um, uh, that I, I didn't want anybody else to know that I was, um, that I was homeless or I needed anything because I didn't want anybody to feel sorry for me. Um, I didn't want anyone to feel as if they, you know, I, um, I just wanted people to think that everything was okay and everything was, uh, was, was, was good because not that I would have felt more accomplished or, you know, better about myself, but I felt like I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't making an impact and it's, I'm gonna put a scarf on. <laughs> I'm gonna just keep running, but I've always wanted to make films, um, to be able to change people's lives. I want to get to the point too, where I can, you know, create a movie or create a play and impact people's lives. It's, it's funny because one of the biggest things that I see as I'm growing up here, just as an actor, um, as an actor, as a director, I, I found that a long time ago. I just found within myself that I wanted to be able to, you know, change lives. And I didn't feel like I could really change lives by doing the same thing that I'm always doing. I didn't feel like I could really... Um, change lives by just you know whatever okay <laughs> just by you know going to work every day and um here's the thing sometimes people say you know you go to work every day and you can be able to change the lives of others and impact you know other people and you know depending on what you might say they might want to change your lives or do something differently because of something that you might have said to them or something but for me, like I've been a CNA for a while and I started being a CNA because, um, honestly, like my mom had a stroke now eight years ago. Um, before that, my father passed away three years before my mother had a stroke and I saw a man who worked so hard and loved his family so much. I felt like maybe he felt like he couldn't really be the best that he could be like his fullest potential because it was so many different things you could, you know, you got just drama, you got, you know, he had his own practice. He was a lawyer. Um, it's a lot of stress, a lot of struggles and people calling and asking, acting crazy. Then you have people who, um, just take advantage of you or just don't really believe in you and just that. You never really feel like you're 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 working at your best or you're doing the, you're making the greatest impact that you can and um I saw that just just working with him a lot of times and I felt like after a while like wow I don't want to live a life like that even if I'm a lawyer or a doctor unless I'm making an impact you know an impact sometimes people can get lost in their um in their profession they say oh I because I, I have a title you know like. I'm this or I'm that you have a title and therefore it sometimes it takes away um it takes away your purpose of doing that thing I think or sometimes you just do a job because it's like well that's what's paying bills and that's what my education level leads me and that's the only thing that people are hiring me for so then you sort of kind of don't believe in yourself as is is as best because you figure <sighs> What's the purpose? I'm not going to get paid for it. What's the purpose? No one's going to see this. What's the purpose? And it's funny because over the years, 
as being a CNA, I was, I've always um, looked at different things and I would think like, these people could care less about what I'm doing for them. Really. Sometimes people feel, most times, people feel extremely entitled. Like I'm paying to stay here. My insurance is covering this so I can treat you like crap because I pay your paycheck. You know, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't get paid. And it's, it's that kind of smug thinking and it's very unappreciative and it's very, I don't know how else to describe it, but I've seen it in so many people and I'm just like, wow. You have so many people who don't have health insurance, who can't be in this long-term care facility or the short-term care facility, uh, rehab, or whatever. Who can't, who you know, who don't have the option of being in at home with an aide to be able to help them do everything from taking a shower, brushing their teeth, changing their clothes, the things that you take for granted every single day. There's people that don't have that. And here you are, you're blessed to have this yeah because you worked hard in your life and everything but for the most part you're blessed because all of that could be taken right from you and yet although people know that they're blessed or maybe they don't see it as a blessing maybe they just see it as like I mean I worked hard for this this is what I got you know I mean I had a title and they just take for granted who people are to them it's 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 crazy to me I say all that to say, I really don't feel like I'm being impactful in being a CNA. Or maybe it's just the place where I am. You know, um, I created a nonprofit organization and I don't know the steps to try to get to that. But I would like to see if I can try to do something with a nonprofit organization where it's going to be called Spread Love. Spread Love. Um, I want that to be on book bags, on platters, on pens, on books. I want people, you know, maybe like a composition book. I I can create the labels. I have to get somebody to help me create like a logo. Um, But I would really, I'm really interested to see um, people's stories because I know a lot of homeless people, they have stories because they had a life before they became homeless. And obviously, like I was saying, there was a time before where um, I was so hit financially, and my story is is pretty interesting, but I mean, I was so hit financially, and it came at the worst time where an old friend of mine now, I knew her for 20 years, and she totaled my vehicle, never paid me a dime, didn't care about the fixing the car, she did not care about... Um, Um, like repairing the car she didn't care about like if I wanted to continue to do my acting I wanted to travel I wanted to finish school for two years um and it's still not complete we still after two years um and I just felt like maybe I just need to get in a different space of what I should do because this person is not going to change she's probably not going to pay I'm probably going to have to put a lien on whatever she has already went for the judgment and I got it but It's disgusting of somebody that I knew for so long. She didn't even show up to court. And I really think that she probably talked to people to say, okay, well, can this person still take anything from me even if I don't show up? And they probably said no. And so she didn't show up. That's the character of a person who she is. And for to know somebody for 20 years, even if we ended on a bad note, pay your debt. Why leave somebody out in the rain like that? And then she thought she was getting back at me for you know, um, to, to try to set me up on something, um, to say, you know, I tried to hurt her or bring harm to her home or whatever, trying to get me to go to jail. I had a lawyer I had to spend, I didn't spend any time at all in jail. Thank God. I didn't have to go through all of that. All of those, um, charges were dismissed. Oh, my lawyer took care of everything. Thank God. I thank God for my uncle for introducing me to him. And helping me pay a lot of stuff because I wasn't in a position to do any of that stuff. And I believe that the enemy always knows where to hit you at. He knows the people to send around you. He knows the people who you'll probably fall victim of. For the longest time, I used to think that she was my friend. I used to think that she was okay. And, you know, um, and she wasn't all along. She wasn't. I think she's a very horrible person. 
I think she's hard, like mad at her own life. And she, and she's, she's just miserable. She's very miserable, evil, evil woman. And, um, that really affected me. But I say all that to say every homeless person has his story, his or her story. And mine started out that way where I literally lost everything from my car, a place to stay. I had back issues because I got in a car accident. Um, maybe like a couple few years prior to that. Um, I couldn't work everywhere. Um, I mean, even to be a CNA, I had to sort of kind of just push past my, my back pain because I have to make a living. And, uh, but Fast forward, seeing this um, movie, Conversations with God, it really made me think like, um, I can make more of an impact by just believing in myself and believing what God has put on the inside of me to do something greater for men and men and women. Um, so that's why I, I want to start uh, this um, nonprofit organization as spread the love because, or just spread love, not the love. I'm going to spread the love. It's just spread love. And you know, I am, um, it could be anything. You can spread the love by yourself and on your own just by, you know, maybe making 10 sandwiches for somebody a day or within a month, just start within a month, maybe breakfast, lunch, and dinner for, for maybe three or four homeless people that you know, or somebody, if you're a child, maybe someone who's in your school that, you know, they have like they come from a bad background or maybe like they're coming from a group home or they really don't have much and you might be able to give them an old pair of your sneakers or, you know, you might be able to give them a a jacket that you're no longer wearing because you know that they don't have parents or maybe they do have parents and their parents maybe don't care for them or maybe they do care for them, but they might just not have the money to give, you know, little Johnny or little Susie or whatever, um, you know, these different things and they might not be able to have pencils and pens. And, you know, if you ever notice that every time I turn around, little Johnny never has a pen, he never has a book. And maybe that, that 35 cent or that dollar composition book or whatever, depending on where you go, um, can be able to help change his life. Like, man, I can write now I can read now. And I mean, there's been several times where I would do things and I'm like, wow, I didn't think that somebody even paid attention to something that I didn't have. And that's something that I've always been trying to fight. I'm, I'm, I'm that person. Like if I see a need that needs to be met, I usually go do it. I help out the elderly and usually the elderly is always like my thing. I think it's because when my mom had a stroke and, and then my dad passed away three years prior to her and you know, my grandmother is 81 years old. She'll be 82 this year. Thank God. And, um, you know, I have nieces and nephews, I have two brothers, so I'm used to doing things for other people if you ask or if you don't ask, but it's usually because I just want to show love and I just want to show you, I see you and I care and I want to help and I want, I want to help and I want to be impactful in someone's life. And that's what the whole synopsis of this 13 minute video is. (laughs) Be impactful in someone's life. It's nice to do something where it's like, oh, here's a pen. Thank you so much. Oh, that's nice. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a kind act of service. But being impactful in someone's life is so much deeper because you're not just helping them at the moment or for a day or two or for a week. You could be helping them and impacting them to change generations. And to be able to um, look back and they can be able to help families and other generations and that can inspire them to do other great things because you've done something so selfless and made a sacrifice for something for them. So I'm thinking of different things that I can do. If it's making platters for them, you know, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I don't care if it's making sandwiches or I like chili and rice. So, you know, maybe making some chili and rice. And if I can just feed like one person or four people or, you know, um, or five people or whatever, have, have your thing. I mean, even now I'm not in a great position to do above and beyond. And, but at the same time, I feel like I can do something. So I've chosen to take just, I'll start out with, 
I can do five. I'll start out with five people and everything from bottled waters, backpacks, toothbrush, toothpaste, um, soap, washcloths, uh, just different things like that. And, and I don't know how to create a business plan, but I, I believe that God will help me and guide me through everything. I think that if you start out with a good, a good purpose and you just want to help people and you just want to love people, you don't want anything back. And that's another thing I was going to say. We live in this world where everyone's trying to make money off of something that they think that somebody else needs. I had to think about that. People see your need and how can I profit off of that thing that I know that you need? Yes, it's going to take money to just say I might start out with five people, but it might grow to a point where I'm helping 10,000 homeless people or low income people get to college or finish school or just finishing their high school diploma and or getting a going back to school and getting a GD or you're impacting someone's life. I mean, really making a change. I don't want to try to profit off of you. I would like to get to a point where I can make money so I can help more people and turn that five into 10,000 and then that 10,000 into 50,000 and 50,000 to a million to all over the world. Cause that's going to obviously take money. I'm going to start out with hopefully people will volunteer and bring things, bring used jackets and coats, slightly used and uh, sneakers or shoes or dresses, whatever you can be able to do. And I think that if regular everyday people did this stuff and this would be awesome. And so homeless people or, um, or, uh, you know, low income housing, they wouldn't just look to churches to do these great grandioso things. Like they would look at a regular everyday person who's like, I see you and I care about you and I'm not going to try to benefit off of you or make my business bigger just for the heck of it so that my name can be bigger. But I'm going to help you so that you'll go out there and you'll hopefully help others. And I want to be able to help you so I can help others and, you know, I can be able to spread that's why I want spread to love, spread the spread love, um, to, to be worldwide because we live in this dark world and depending on your perception, it could be light or it could be dark, but I want to say we live in a dark world, but we do, we live in a dark world and it's, it's our, it's our decision to shine our lights we have a light on the inside of us. That's God. We have God on the inside of us. It's our decision. It should be our decision. It is our decision to spread that light all over the world. Light this world with love. Spread your love. Spread your light. Why not? Don't try to just profit off of other people and see what other things that you can do and how they can, you know, benefit you know, how see how you can benefit from making a dime off of them, money off of them. That's not the purpose. And that's one of the reasons why so many things get corrupted because you start out with trying to do something good for people and it ends up being like, oh, I'll offer you this amount of money. And you come over here, you change the way that you dress, change the way that you talk, you change what you're driving. I'm not saying that you shouldn't upgrade yourself. Do that. But don't forget about the people that you're trying to help. That's the whole gist of it that's why you got there that's why you're doing what you're doing so um i thank you for listening and i hope and pray that you touch someone else's life um i'm gonna try to make more videos but i mean i'm still learning myself and i'm still learning um how i can be impactful whether it's through writing of course like i write i write plays i write po I've, I've wrote poetry before I have to get the courage of to do spoken word, but I have a voice and I thank God for that. I have, I have a, I have a message on the inside of me and I thank God for giving me all these different avenues and all these different feelings and, 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 and wanting to do that, to spread it to other people, whether it's in theater, if it's in the arts, if it's on film, if it's on YouTube, um, spread your love, however, how it is a selfless selfless act that you can 
obviously do for other people and not try to make a dime off of. Just do it. I, I'm going to do my chili and rice thing for dinner and maybe for my lunch or breakfast, make like a sandwich, a turkey and cheese sandwich, with, you know, with a banana or an orange, just something small. And it can always get bigger and greater. But just show people that you love them. Show people that there is love in this world and you can do anything. You can do anything through Christ who strengthens you. God is real. God is living. God is almighty. He's the father. <clears throat> Trust that instinct that's on the inside of you. Have your conversation with God. And just know that God has greater for you. He has greater for you because you're supposed to change other people too. He has greater for others. So spread your love. Get outside of yourself. And outside of yourself, outside of your family, outside of your neighborhood. And think world. Think Africa. Think China and Russia or everything else besides just down the street. Not that there's anything wrong with just down the street. If you want to try just down the street, then do that. Cause you never know who knows someone else and who, how somebody else can impact somebody else. So I encourage you to just to, to do, to live your best life and to help others, bring others with you. And, uh, when you profit, you have a bit of, you you have abundance in your life that God has brought you. He's opened up a door for opportunity. Help other people. Bless other people. Because that's what we're here for. We're here to help. You're a blessing to be a blessing to others. You're not just a blessing to be a blessing to yourself. You're a blessing to be a blessing to others. So, I love you. God bless. Be wonderful. Be prosperous. And, uh. Spread the love. Peace.